Hi, this is Gail with Beta Jewelry Diva, and today we are going to do some chain mail. You are going to learn how to do the double spiral pattern. This is also called a rope. You probably can see how it got its name of being rope. So we're going to learn how to do the weave. We are going to make this bracelet, so this is a project video as well. And at the end, I will also show you some other jewelry that I have made using this particular chain mail weave. If you enjoy this video and you'd like to see more chain mail videos, give it a thumbs up. Let's go ahead and check out the supplies that we're going to need for this. For today, these are the supplies you're going to need. You will need some 18 gauge jump rings. These are 5 millimeter inside diameter. You need approximately 20 per inch, so just so you know how many to get. You will need two pairs of pliers. You, I am using two flat nose. You can use um, chain nose or bent nose if you like, just no round nose. You'll need a scrap piece of wire and then you'll need some sort of head pin or eye pin with some uh, beads for the dangle and you will also need a clasp. You're going to start by closing two jump rings and then opening all the rest of the jump rings. I've only opened about 20 or so here just to give you an idea. You can open them all at once or by the, by the inch or whatever you please. I'm going to take the two jump rings and then I'm going to take my scrap piece of wire and just thread it through the two closed jump rings. And this is just going to give me a handle to hold on to. Where'd that third one come from? Good heavens. sneaking into the picture here. So closing the two jump rings onto the scrap piece of wire. So again this gives us a handle. It also lets us know which end we started with. So I'm going to take one jump ring and I'm going to go ahead and put it through both of the closed jump rings and then close this one. And if you're not sure about how to open and close jump rings, I do have the Chainmail 101 video for that. So I'm going to take the second jump ring and I'm going to put it through the original two. So it's going to be sitting right beside the one that I just put on. And so if I dangle this down, you see that I just have a two and two chain. Okay, you're going to, for this next set, you're going to go ahead and there is a space that's common between all these jump rings. And it is right here. So you can see that I go through both sets of jump rings. Let's see if I can get a better photo of that. So you can see that there's a space and that's where my wire is going through. That is where we're going to want to put our next jump ring. If it helps you to leave a wire in place, sometimes it's, it's useful to do that. But for me, I'm not going to. But I'll get a, another jump ring. And I'm going to put it through the area that's common to both. So you can see that these two are kind of sitting on top of each other at an angle. So I'm going to put on this jump ring and close it. So now it looks like this. So yeah, not much at the moment. So we've got to, and one thing about this is in the very beginning, you don't want to be putting this down and picking it back up. Um, I highly suggest that you kind of keep it in your hands if you can. If you have to lay it down or whatever, just make sure that, okay, I know which end is my starting end, and then I've got to find my last set of jump rings. So I know that I need to add another set in the same spot that I put this one. This is the my one last one that I added. And this one's kind of easier because you know exactly which jump rings you want to go through. 
And one thing you don't want to do, which is something that I just did, is I went through all five jump rings. You don't want to do that. You don't want to catch your additional jump ring. And I'll, I'll admit this is a little tricky in the very beginning. But once you get the first, oh, I don't know, maybe four or five rows on it, it becomes a whole lot easier because you can just dangle them and it, you'll start seeing really easily which is the next set of jump rings to go through. So you can see right here that it's very easy to tell that I'm going to be putting my next jump ring in this space right here. That's the spot I'm going for. So the first you know, four jump rings or six jump rings are a little bit of a challenge. But after that, it becomes very easy to see which of the jump rings you want to go ahead or which what the space is. So if I dangle this again and kind of look through it, I see that's exactly my space that I want to use. I'm going to put my jump ring right beside it. Now, if you're having problems with this after, you know, you've got your first four or five on, if you are having problems getting your jump rings through the little holes, that could mean one of a few things. One of the things that might be is you're using the wrong um, aspect ratio. I have an aspect ratio of 5 for this. Um, you could probably go as low as about 4.8, 4.9 and as high as about a 5.1 before it starts getting real um, too loose. But that's the first thing. Make sure you have the right aspect ratio. And again, Chainmail 101, I talk about aspect ratio. Um, the other thing is you might have accidentally put it through the wrong set of jump rings. Maybe you accidentally caught the third one back or something like that. So. If you start having problems, you always want to go through, dangle it up so you can see. It's going to be a lot easier to see if there's a mistake if you dangle it like this. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and do a whole bunch of jump rings. And I'll come back when my bracelet is about where I want it to be. And then we'll talk about putting on the clasp and finishing it off and all that good sort of stuff. Okay, so I've got it to the length that I want it. So now let's go ahead and finish it, uh, put on the clasp, put on the dangles, and uh, call it good. So you can see I've got my last couple of in. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to take a single jump ring and I'm going to thread it through just like I would with a normal jump ring. So close it. And then on this end, we'll go ahead and take this off. And before I put on the jump ring, I want to get my clasp ready and my dangle ready. So let's go ahead and do the dangle. I've just got a an eye pin, and I'm going to go ahead and put my lamp work bead on. Let's see, I've got a couple of little tiny copper beads. And I didn't have any rose gold wire, so which is what I have this made of. It's uh, you know, enameled rose gold. So copper was it. Come on. Just one of those mornings where this does not want to cooperate. There we go. So I've got this on. And then I am going to come in with some round nose pliers. So I kind of lied when I said... Earlier I needed a, I didn't need round nose pliers, but if you're not going to use the dangle, you don't need it. So, I'm just going to come in and do a couple of wraps. And again, if you don't know how to do um, wrap loops, as, my, as I always say, I've got a video for that. <laughs> You know how some people say, well, there's an app for that. Well, I've got a video for that. OK, 
Okay, just there we go. So I've got that. I have my last end. This is the end that I took off the wire from. I'm going to put on, put it on just like normal. I'm going to add the dangle and then add the clasp and find my other set of pliers and close this. Now obviously the the dangle part is totally optional or you could put more or you could kind of make this almost into a um, a uh, charm bracelet if you wanted to although there are better weaves for that. So to uh, do it that's all you have to do. So obviously you can use any kind of uh, clasp that you like. I just happen to make up a, a copper clasp and my dangle and we've called it good. Once again, here's the one we just made. I thought it looked a little lonely with just this lampwork bead there. So I put on another little dangle. So a couple of other options. Um, I made this one out of copper and I still use the 18 gauge five millimeter inside diameter and I patinaed it. So this was uh, really nice. I probably need to polish it up just a little bit more, but I like that kind of warm look. Another set of ideas is uh, try going smaller and making earrings out of this. Now I used a um, probably about a 4.9 um, aspect ratio on this one and you can see that while it still bends it's not nearly as flexible as these so keep in mind that when you go for a lower aspect ratio you uh, might be giving up some of the bendability for this but I made these in sterling silver just pop them on some uh, posts and that's another way to use this particular weave. Um, also makes just an absolutely fantastic uh, necklace. So there you go. We have some uh, double rope weaves or double spiral, also called the rope weave. And we've made a bracelet and you've got some other ideas for bracelets and earrings. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. And I'd love to see you over at BeadedJewelryDiva.com. And of course, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you don't already do so. This is Gail signing out saying have yourself a great day. Bye.